Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that uh, all is well with you guys. Uh, we're having a long winter this this winter. I wanted to do this outside, but it keeps uh, one minute the sun's shining a little bit. The next minute it's hailing. Uh, it hailed a little bit yesterday. We had ice. The temperature was at 40 degrees, and the wind got up and dropped the temperature down below to 30. And we had ice <laughs> this late in April. Um, so we're going to be doing the set and talk inside. And before we get into the set and talk, well this is the set and talk, but just a little bit about the ministry. Um, right now, we will get back to the um, Are You Looking? Prove Your Own Self series. We're going to get into the, the righteousness of God. Okay? And Jesus Christ's righteousness being imputed to us. And that we're supposed to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ now. And putting on the breastplate of righteousness and whatnot. We're going to get into that, okay? But right now, I'm kind of falling behind a little bit, Brothers of Christ. I've got studies because I've got brethren that are asking uh, questions and wanting to talk a little bit about this, want to talk a little bit about that. And uh, I've got a study that I'm putting together, just a quick study, but uh, about uh, women becoming men in the resurrection. Uh, that was a topic that someone wanted to talk about. Uh, someone asked me, how can you um, have godly sorrow? How does one have godly sorrow uh, under one of my repentant videos? Because today, the lost world loves to take repentance out. Repentance just takes it out, takes it out, takes it out. And, oh, repentance is a work, this and that. And it's like, okay, I'm putting something together. Not, you know, something together, just to, uh, something basic that says, hey, this is as basic as it gets. So, sometimes, Brother Says Christ, when it comes to, like I said, I would say this ministry, but... I believe that anybody that's in ministry, we're all part of Paul's ministry. Okay, Paul was able to say, my ministry, because he was the apostle to the Gentiles, and the gospel for the Gentiles, for the time of the Gentiles, Jesus coined the phrase, time of the Gentiles. It's not church age, even though we tend to say church age sometimes, it's the time of the Gentiles. And what that means is, brothers and Christ, remember the scriptures and the gospels, uh, salvation was of the Jews. Go not, he told his disciples, go not in the way of the Gentiles or the Samaritans, Jews that have lost the inheritance. Do not go in the way of the Gentiles. Why? Because salvation is of the Jews. The time of Gentiles trouble, uh, I mean, time of Gentiles, we're in the time of Gentiles trouble. There's the time of Jacob's trouble, which is just about Jews. But today, when we say the time of, of the Gentiles, we're not saying only Gentiles can get saved. What we're saying is in this time period, from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ, salvation has gone out to the world. Gentiles now can get saved. Salvation is not just of the Jews today. But we need to use Bible terms. Okay, we need to use Bible terms. But the time of the Gentiles. Okay? So, uh... Like I said, there's just things that brethren are hitting me up with questions. There's times where this ministry, get back to what I was saying, this ministry, I'm not saying this ministry like it's my ministry versus someone else's ministry. We're all supposed to be part of Paul's ministry. We're all supposed to be of the same mind and the same judgment, striving together, done all to stand. We're supposed to be standing together, not separately, together. Okay, we're all part of the same ministry. Okay, there's different parts of that ministry, ministry of reconciliation. We're all called into that, but some people might be called in more full-time work to be evangelists, teachers, preachers, elders, okay, you know, and so on, bishops, deacon. There's different uh, gifts that God gives us in that ministry. There's different parts within that ministry, but there's still only one ministry. And there's times, back to what I was saying, brothers of Christ, there's times where I'm like, oh, I want to put out this, and oh, I want to put out that, and Lord, I'm doing this study, and oh, I'm fascinated by this study, which is great, and, and I do that. I do put out studies sometimes that the Lord has shown me and puts on my heart and says, hey, put this out. But I can't forget sometimes that there are brethren that are hitting me up and saying, what about this? Have you heard about this? What are your thoughts on this? How do we do this? I heard this. Is that true? There's sometimes that... I do studies based off of the brethren. What the brethren are asking me and saying, hey, this is out there. I, I think you need to say something about this and whatnot. So right now, Brother Sis Christ, please forgive me. I'm playing catch up. Okay? I'm playing catch up in the sense that I'm not going to put, I don't want to put out 50 videos in one week. And I'll tell you why. I believe 
if you if you looked at my channel, I had to take a lot of videos down from one brother because he started whining like a little two year old, made me take down all his videos, and I believe that you should be watching and following more than one man. Okay, if you get if you find yourself only following one man in ministry, you're gonna fall into the trap of becoming like a cultist atmosphere and a cultist at, uh, mindset. You're going to be what the Bible calls a respecter of persons. And that's dangerous. That person goes to the right, that person goes to the left, you're going to follow that person to the right or left because there's nobody else you're watching that's going to say, hey, that person's wrong. That person's wrong here. He's going to the right when he should stay on the straight and narrow. He's going to the left when he needs to stay on the straight and narrow. He needs to stand for this and he's turning from it. Don't Brothers and Christ, you're not supposed to be following just one man. You need to find two, three, four good Bible-believing, God-fearing men that are preaching the Word of God, that are doing their best to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Doing your best. Do, doing their best to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Keep, your, uh, keep the Word of God in your hearts and living it. Okay? Um, when you fall in the trap of watching just one man, like I said, you, I've seen brethren fall away. Their heart gets hardened. Uh, prideful and bitter and it's all based off of the one-man show the one-man show I'm of him and whatever he does I have to do wherever he goes I have to go I'm of him okay be careful when you see comments in the comments section. I think these are probably servants of Satan or brethren that are being caught up with this whole thing about telling uh, um, making comments under videos saying you're the only Bible believing preacher out there that's not true. If someone told me that, I'd be like, that's not true. There's few of us, and we're getting fewer and fewer in these last days, but I'm not the only Bible-believing, God-fearing man out there preaching the Word of God. There's, few, there's still several of us out there, brothers and sisters of Christ, several of us. So I always try to put more than just me on my channel because um, I want brethren to have the attitude that I'm not the final authority. This is the final authority. You're not supposed to just watch one man, you're supposed to watch several men. That being the case, going back to what I was saying, why don't I put out 50 videos a week? Because I understand, brothers and Christ, that if you're watching three, two, three, four men, and each one of us is putting out one solid Bible study, hour-long Bible study, every week, that's four Bible studies to go through. Let's say you're watching four brethren. That's four Bible studies to go through, with, through on top of your job that you're working on top of your responsibilities, if you're married and you have kids, I understand that they don't. The brethren don't have all the time in the world. Some of us seem to have more time than others, but I understand there's that factor. But the other factor that I'm really going to hit you with, just as a you know, an exhortation and a challenge, brother says Christ, how often do you spend watching videos? Whether hopefully they're Bible study videos, but I know brethren that spend a lot of time watching worldly videos. The time you spent on the computer watching videos, let's say it's just Bible study videos. My question to you and my challenge to you is, is, does the time that you spend reading the Word of God yourself, studying the Word of God yourself, and in prayer, remember you're to pray without ceasing. You can pray when you're working. You can pray when you sit down and take a break, talk with the Lord. Uh, you can pray when you go for walks. Does that time that you spend with the Lord one-on-one -on -one in prayer, reading the Word of God, studying the Word of God, does that amount of time trump the amount of time that you're watching people like me, brethren like me, not people like me, but brethren like me, uh, other brethren like Peter Ruckman, some of the other brethren out there, um, does that time that you spend on the, with the Lord one-on-one -on -one trump the time, that time, the time you spend more time the here than there? That's something to think about, brothers of Christ, and that's my encouragement to you. You need to spend more time in this, in prayer, than you do in this. Now, like I said, watching studies is okay. When I was newly saved, I was watching six hours a day of Bible studies, following along with my Bible and everything. But I had to get a point, of several years down the road, but I had to get to a point where I started having to get in the habit of starting my day with the Word of God, because I wasn't. Starting my day with the Word of God one-on-one -on -one with the Lord, ending my day with the Word of God one-on-one -on -one with the Lord, I had to start getting into the habit of praying, not just sitting there. Some people think that you have to pray, you have to take your hat off, you've got to bow your head, and you've got to pray, and it's like, that's earnest prayer. I do that too. That's earnest prayer. 
But we're not supposed to have our eyes closed and bowed 24-7. The Bible says we're supposed to, which we're going to read here, we're supposed to pray without ceasing. Okay? So you can pray with your eyes open. You can pray with, with the hat on. Okay? We already did a study on that. With some, of the, some people were saying, no, no, it says here that the man that prayeth or prophesieth with his head covered, it's a shame. He's talking about having a woman in authority over him, not a hat. Okay? And the reason I'm wearing a hat indoors right now is because I woke up to a cold house and I started a little bit of the heaters. But this room is on the other side of the house and it's a cold room. And I don't want to start a heater that most of my heaters are old and they make a lot of noise. So I'm just dealing with the, the cold a little bit on this side of the house. But Brother Says Christ, I don't put out tons of videos every week. Sometimes I put out two or three, but I try not to. I try to put out one solid Bible study every week and maybe a few short videos, you know. So I do that, Brother Says Christ, for you. Why? Because I understand that you're busy watching other brethren. I'm not the only one out there. I'm not the man of God, you know, get this pride and and uh, uh, you know worship complex going on okay I'm not the only one out there preaching the, praise God there's other brethren out there preaching okay? uh, and then the other reason is brothers Christ is that I want you I'm trying to encourage you to stay in the Word of, of God yourselves stay in the Word of God yourselves brothers and sisters Christ so I'm gonna get this video out I, I've got like I said I've got some videos that I need to get caught up and I don't want to just throw them all out at once because uh, I did three videos once and one of the videos was a little an old hymn and I might link it in the, underneath this video. Give me a second. I think I'm going to sneeze. Uh, I didn't. Thank you, Lord. Um, the video, I did a video with a gospel hymn and showing all the snow out here and I threw it out with three videos. I, I know how YouTube works. When I throw out three or four videos, you guys can miss out on a video. And that, that video of that, it was only like eight minutes or four minutes. I think it was four minutes. It was a four to eight minute video. A great hymn, Climbing High Mountains, Trying to Make My Way Home. That's our, we're, we're on our way home. This isn't our home, Brother Scratch. We're going home someday. Our real home's up there. We're supposed to focus on things that are eternal, not things that are temporal. We're supposed to realize that that's our home. We're ambassadors in a foreign land, ambassadors for Jesus Christ. And what we're doing is we're trying to make our way home. We're traveling, serving the Lord as we go, step by step, day by day, that old hymn, day by day. Okay? And it got missed out. It hardly got any views because it got buried by the other two, the videos. Because I put it out first and then the other two, and everybody got into the other two, praise God, the brethren that got into the other two. But it, it kind of got missed. And that tends to happen on YouTube uh, or in any video platform. If you're throwing out tons of videos at once, that first video that you put out seems to get buried by the others. So there's that factor too. But my biggest thing, Brother Sir Christ, is my push with this ministry, Brother Sir Christ, is that you stay in the Bible yourselves. Spend more time in this Bible and in prayer than you do watching Bible studies. Is that true? Or every time the Bible studies come along, you've got to grab your book and dust the dust off. Okay, it's time to do my weekly Bible study. Or does this book get opened every day? It needs to be opened every day. It needs to be read every day. The King James Bible. I always have to throw that in every once in a while. The King James Bible. Right? It's God's perfect written word in the English language. All right? Not the other Bible perversions. The King James Bible. But is your Bible gathering dust? Just sitting on the, on the tabletop somewhere? On the shelf somewhere? Something to think about. So that's why I'm not putting out hardcore videos every week. Like tons of videos every week, what I mean by it. But the, lately, when I think I'm going to do like a 30-minute video, God puts it on my heart. Like this one was going to be like a 30-minute video, but it's just going to be a little bit longer. So it's a set and talk video, but we're going to get into the scriptures. Brothers and Christ, I did a study, exhortation. Have you exhorted a brother in Christ lately? Have you, brothers and Christ? Have you exhorted a brother in Christ? So I want to sit down and talk. Turn to uh, 1 Thessalonians Chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. One of the other things that I'm trying to work on in between doing those studies about uh, are you looking is um, there was a disagreement among the brethren about uh, 2, Corinthians, or 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay, the context. Is it directed to us today or is it directed to the time of Jacob's trouble? And there's a, there's a, 
there's a conflict among the body of Christ. So it's something that they're, they're interested, the brethren are interested in. So I'm going to do an expository study, and I'm working on it right now. Doing an expository study, we're going to compare scriptures with scripture, and by above all, we can learn something from it. Instruction, righteousness, above all, we can learn something from it. And as I was doing it, I came across this verse right here, and this section of verses, and I want to read it with you and encourage you, brothers and sisters, Christ, in these last days, in these dark days, don't get distracted by the world. Don't get distracted by people that are too focused on the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, we have a mission, and our mission doesn't change no matter how wicked this world is. We have a mission, brothers and sisters, Christ, and our mission doesn't change when God's bringing, uh, when we can see signs where God is preparing this world for the time of Jacob's trouble that we're not going to be going through. Okay? Don't get distracted by all that. Our mission doesn't change. We're to preach the gospel. Okay? We're supposed to be a verbal witness and a living witness. We're supposed to stay in our Bibles every day. We're supposed to sing hymns. We're supposed to worship God. We're supposed to pray. We're supposed to be there for one another. We're supposed to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. The mission doesn't change no matter how bad this world gets. But some brethren are getting distracted by this world. Don't do that. All right? Don't do that. All right? So 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter, chapter 5, verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, that labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you. That's what this is about, brothers of Christ, exhorting and admonishing. All right? To know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love. Love, not pride, not respecter of persons. It's okay to say, hey, this man's a great preacher, this man's a great teacher, Peter Ruckman's a great preacher, great teacher, there's things I disagree with him on, but he's still a great preacher. Okay, But I'm not going to worship the man, I'm doing it out of love, because the man sacrificed a lot to do what he did to serve the body of Christ and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, for the work that they do. And be at peace among yourselves, and be at peace among yourselves, brothers and sisters in Christ. That we desperately need in these last days. It seems a lot of snakes, wolves in sheep's clothing, a lot of snakes like to slither their way in and they like to cause problems. They cause division. And sometimes, and I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes the snakes slither in going, I'm going to cause a problem, and they see a man that gets all prideful, and they start justifying sin for a season, they got idolatry, and the snake just goes, oh, wait, I don't have to do anything, I can just sit here and watch him cause division and destroy the flock. You have that two sides to the coin. You've got wolves in sheep's clothing coming in and causing problems in the flock, and you've got brethren that are becoming part of the falling away. They're getting into the world, into the flesh, and they're causing problems. What we desperately need in the body of Christ is we need everyone to be at peace among yourselves. Together we need to be at peace. And we all need to be one. Of one mind, of the same mind, the same judgment, striving together, loving one another. We're going to stop there for a second. I got a letter from a sister in Christ, and I want to read that letter because it was it was the sister in Christ doing that right there, and esteeming them very highly in love, in love for their work's sake. There's times, brother, sister Christ, that I do get down, but I want to read this first and then talk about it as we're reading this. But I got a letter. Thank you, sister in Christ, for the encouragement, for the exhortation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It says hello, brother Philip. Thank you very much for your response for you, and for the video. She had asked me a question about marriage, the head coverings. About, she asked me about head coverings. And I, did, I made a video for the Sisters in Christ and the Brethren as a whole. Um, it was a great help to me and also a confirmation of godly advice another brother and sister gave to me as well. Thank you for your admonition about a head covering. You are right. I had not considered praying for an older godly brother to look out for me as a father would. Because in that study I've talked about head coverings not does not have to be a husband. A head covering can be a father, a saved father, uh, the eldest brother, saved brother in, in, in the family. It can be an elder in the church, a saved brother in the church that can take on the responsibilities of being a head covering for the younger women. 
that don't have head coverings, or widows that don't have head coverings. And we see that in the Bible where they appointed men to be head coverings for these widows. Okay. You are right, I had not considered praying for an older godly brother to look out for me as a father would. I will pray with more understanding now. I also want to thank you for doing just that with your response and always writing back. Your love and care for the body of Christ has strengthened me in my own walk with the Lord many times and continues to do so. I also have a prayer praise to share with you of what the Lord is doing in answer to my own prayer and those of other brethren regarding face-to-face -face fellowship. Now I want to stop there for a second to make a comment. You know how we have brethren that come out and do, do great studies, amazing studies on unanswered prayers. But brother and sister Christ, in these last days it seems what we're failing to do is to thank God for the actual answered ones. We're overlooking the prayers that God is answering and not giving God grace and glory, praise and glory. Okay, we're always talking about the unanswered prayer. Yeah, praise God for unanswered prayers, but we also need to praise God for the answered ones. Let's keep continuing. A dear brother and sister in Christ, married couple, have put their home up for sale, and the Lord has directed them to move to Mississippi, which is the state where I live. They will be moving over 2,000 miles. That's a long way. <laughs> When I was in the military, there's a lot of times I had to transfer from one base to another base or I had to go with what they call temporary assignments where I'm just like going somewhere for a short time, which is like six months, sometimes been six months, up to six months, and you have to travel a long way. Sometimes I traveled, I've traveled by car, I've traveled by plane. I never did travel by boat, <laughs> but 2,000 miles is a long distance, and she puts an exclamation point. I just don't feel like yelling this morning. They moved over 2,000 miles. We are greatly looking forward to the fellowship and privilege to serve the Lord together, being fellow laborers together in the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Amen. I pray for you often to have the same opportunity for face-to-face -face fellowship, Brother Philip. And I do. I keep praying. If, the door, if God opens the doors, praise God. If God keeps the doors closed, praise God. That's what I'm working on, Brother Jesus Christ, and this sister, if she's watching um, the closed door part is the part that I'm working on, being content with what God has for me, whether it has to do with the ministry, uh, fellowship, what God has for me. Not just food and raiment, the Bible talks about with food and raiment, be there with, be content. That's a hard thing for today, for the, for the people of this world today. They're not content. Americans live like, like rich people, but they whine and complain um, way too much. Why? Because they're not content with food and raiment. But I'm also learning to be content with what I have. Uh, but I do pray for that. And thank you, brothers, sister Christ, and this sister in Christ that helped pray for me. And I pray for you guys that God opens doors for you to have face-to-face -face fellowship. Okay. I love you dearly in the Lord, Brother Philip. The ministry the Lord has entrusted you with has blessed me since you first started on YouTube. I actually started looking through some of my old videos and looked at first, I looked at how old I'm getting. Uh, I've been putting out videos for five years now. And it seems like I'm aging fast in five years. Um, but I was, I was praising the Lord, and I was talking to the Lord and, uh, about how life was for me when I first started, and how life is now, and how the, how the world was five years ago is not the same world we're looking at today. Can I get an amen on that? How many of you agree with me on that? That the world we're looking at today is the same world. Five, it's like ten times worse, fifty times worse, a million times worse. But I thank her for this encouragement. And I'll get to the reason why. The ministry the Lord has entrusted you has blessed me since you first started out on YouTube. Stay strong, brother. Thank you for that encouragement. Don't go grow weary in well-doing. There are times, brother says Christ, that I, I ask myself, am I really making a dent? Am I helping the brothers in Christ? It doesn't happen all the times, but there's times, like when I, when I read this, it was just that God does it perfectly. I was really down. I was very sorrowful. I was thinking of brethren that have turned their back on me, brethren that I used to fellowship with, and I think of the body of Christ being separated. I think of how wicked this world is. And sometimes I watch videos of, um, like, Robert Sheffy, uh, where you see how the world was back then, and I get a little sorrowful, and I'm like, Lord, am I really making a dent? Am I really doing anything to really help the brethren out or to encourage the brethren? Right now... 
I, I'm not trying to get into anything debating wise or anything, but I've had someone, a, a brother in Christ turn on me that has, uh, how do you say it, clout. He's popular. He has say. And because he's turned on me, and he's gotten a lot of brethren to turn on me. So the brethren that do still love me and haven't turned on me, they don't make many comments under the channel because they don't want to be caught by that man and his following. Um, so there's times where that gets me down. I used to get lots of comments under the comment section, and we'd ask questions, and we'd talk about the Word of God, we'd talk about the study that I did. And it's just, I get down sometimes, Brother Christ. I, I get depressed, and I get down. And when I read this, Sister in Christ, it really lifted my spirits. It really did. And God reminds me that it's just that one person that matters. Brothers in Christ, like I said, it's just a sit down talk. Be careful about being worried. If you're trying to make some Bible studies, give your testimony, put the gospel out there. Uh, don't get distracted by um, likes, dislikes, views, okay? Uh, don't get distracted by that kind of stuff. If you reach one person, that's all that matters. You've done the work of God if you reach one person. If you've encouraged one person to keep, the, one brother or sister in Christ to keep their eyes on Jesus Christ, to keep hiding this word in their heart, to stay in the word daily, you're doing a good work. But don't grow weary in well-doing. Okay? A lot of brethren have. Some brethren have given up. They've give, gotten back into the flesh. They got back into the world. And they just seem to disappear. Some brethren, their, their ministry changes. Does a, does a 180. Why? Because they're starting to get into the world too much. They're growing weary in world doing. There's got to be something else other than well doing. I said well doing. Well doing. There's got to be something else. Right? For me, that's all there is. This is my life. The Word of God is my life. Jesus is my life. Right? So I thank that sister in Christ. Don't go weary in well-doing. Keep looking for our blessed hope. Praise God. Thank you. Sometimes my eyes get distracted by what's going on in this world, how bad things are getting, and I keep forgetting that my eyes, it's okay to, to we're supposed to be watchful about what's going on around us, brothers and sisters. We're not supposed to be deep to deep, but we're not supposed to be distracted by what's going on around us. We're supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. He can come back any day now. If he came, I would say this, if he comes back tomorrow, what do you need to get done for him today? If you knew he was going to come back tomorrow, what are you going to get done? What do you need to get done for him today? What sanctification do you need to get done? Did you let things back in that you gave up for the Lord? You kicked it out, and now you've let it back in. Do you need to kick it out again? Yes, you do. Okay. Have you read the Word of God today? Like I said before, are you praying? Have you prayed today? Have you exhorted a brother in Christ today? This was a great exhortation to me, brother says Christ. And I get letters like this from brethren. Thank you, thank you. Keep looking for that blessed hope. 1 Peter 1, 22. Chapter 1, verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love. You know what unfeigned means, brother says Christ? It's fake. It's not fake. Feigned is fake. Unfeigned is not fake love of the brethren. If I say I love you and I and I and I and I talk about bad about you behind your back, that's not love. If I say I love you, brother, sister Christ, and yet I take a stick and just hit you with it all the time, that, you know what I'm saying? Your actions. I'm trying to contrast your words that come out versus your deeds. Okay, the words and deeds need to line up. Unfeigned love of the brethren. Unfeigned. You have people behind the camera. They'll say I love you. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. That's just words. And yes, I say it. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But the actions are what matter, brothers and sisters in Christ. Your deeds need to line up with your words. If they don't, when you say I love you, it's feigned. It's fake. I know brethren out there that at one time, they used to love, in ministry, that used to love the brethren. Now it's just a phrase they say, a catchphrase for the business that they're running. They don't have love for the brethren. They don't. They're running a business. What happened? Their love went from being unfeigned to being feigned. Fake. Be careful, brothers and sisters of Christ. So, there's a lot of times you can get caught up with what I call a PWC, poly want a cracker. You get caught up in just saying something. 
because it's a phrase that you've heard other people say a million times. It's something you've always said. Sometimes you can say something, know what it means, and over time you forget what it means, and you keep saying it. If you love the brethren, show a better show. Remember the studies about prove your own selves. We'll get back to this. Right? Love unfeigned, okay, with un, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. There are brethren I disagree with, but I still love them. I'm not going to attack them personally. I'm not going to call them names. Okay? I'm not going to so, uh, uh, do a, a smear campaign. Stay away from that man. There are men, brethren that are in ministry that I disagree with, but I still love them. There are brethren that I believe have fallen away to the point where all I can do is preach the gospel to them. But why preach the gospel to them if you don't love them? Because I love them. Not because they're lost, but they need to be reminded who saved them, why they got saved, why they needed to get saved, and who it is they serve. They've forgotten. They've fallen so far, they've forgotten. But we still need to have love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. No matter how much you disagree with one another, no matter how much Satan's coming in trying to cause division, the reason the division is so great, I believe, is because, brothers and sisters, we forgot to love one another. You can disagree with someone and still love them. You can break fellowship with somebody and still love them. But lately, when I see brethren breaking fellowship, there's nothing but hate, pride, bitterness, bitterness that turns into hate, envy. Oh boy. We still need to love one another. There's people, like I said, there's brethren I disagree with, I love them. There's brethren that I can't fellowship with, I've had to break fellowship with them, but I still love them. There's brethren that broke fellowship with me, but they still love me as a brother in Christ, and they're praying for me as I'm praying for you. Okay? We need to have unfeigned love of the brethren. Thank you, sister in Christ. We do. And it encourages me, and it reminds me that, hey, don't get, don't get caught up in the debating the Word of God and the fighting and arguing over the Word of God. Just discuss the Word of God. Remember the Bible says, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. In meekness. We're supposed to talk with love and meekness. Okay. And sincerity and truth. Remember, we're supposed to preach the Word of God in sincerity and in truth. She also puts down John 13, 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if... we got to get back. I just got so much I'm doing, brothers and sisters Christ. we got to get back into the Bible list. We were doing Bible list for instruction, righteousness, going through the whole New Testament, including the Gospels, including the books I believe are written to the Jews. And this time period going into the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, but we need to go through the whole Bible and get back into the Bible list. By this shall a man know that ye are my disciples. Remember, one of the reasons people were called a Christian is because you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. If ye have love one towards another. You, always, you can always tell a bad disciple when they, when they disagree with someone, you can disagree with the brother in Christ. We're not supposed to, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, I'm not going to promote that falsehood of we can agree to disagree when it comes to the Word of God. We're not supposed to be disagreeing, brothers and Christ. It just, it happens. We do disagree from time to time. It does happen, but we're not supposed to. But when it does happen, we're still supposed to have love for one another. Not hate. Right? With love in Christ, the sister in Christ that wrote that. Thank you for that. We just read that here. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Right? And remember them. Thank you for this encouragement, Sister in Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Another brethren that e send me emails um, with encouragement, with questions and encouragements. Okay? Brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be exhorting one another. Okay? And like I said before in other videos, there's times where we have a disagreement, and what I do is, but what I've learned from the scriptures is, is I preach the truth, I plant a seed, and I sit back and wait. It might take a few weeks, it might take a month, it might take a year. And then you come to the knowledge of the truth. Maybe you're not in, your walk is not where my walk is. Okay, sometimes my walk's not where your walk is. Okay? I'm talking about our walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I can motivate you, be a good example to help you speed up your walk if you're newly saved. Uh, the brethren did that to me the first year. 
boy, was I running trying to catch up with everybody when I was saved. I was trying to learn everything and trying to, this is God's perfect written word. Okay, it's God's word. How do I study the Bible? Rightly dividing. You can do word studies, subject studies, um, expository studies. Words have meaning. You're to compare scripture with scripture. Make sure you're getting the context of the passage. I was learning all kinds of stuff trying to catch up with my brothers and sisters of Christ. And I had a lot of brothers and sisters of Christ helping me. Okay. Mainly brethren. Okay. But, uh, wait for it all and say, but you're planting a seed. And the best example I can give of that, brothers and sisters of Christ, is the big disagreement, the Godhead versus the Trinity. Okay. I sat down and in meekness instruct somebody. I wasn't a jerk. He was. I wasn't. He was a big time jerk, getting mad at me, yelling at me. You know, and uh, no, it's the truth. You're lost. You're a heretic. If you can't see the truth, you're a heretic. You're lost, and everything. And it was like I think it was a few months later. I lost track of time, so it could have been anywhere between a month to three months later. He came back and said, "Brother, I'm so sorry for the way I acted. You were right. We need to stick with the Word of God and what God says. And I'm going to stick to the King James Bible, and I'm going to stick to the Godhead of the King James Bible." I'm going to stop being one of those people that add to the Word of God and subtract from the Word of God. I'm going to trust the Lord. He chose words for a reason. This is perfect. It doesn't need to be corrected. doesn't need to be added to. doesn't need to be subtracted from. What happened there? I planted a seed. I showed him love. No matter how he treated me, I showed him love, and I preached the truth to him in meekness. And, the, and that's not the only time. There's a lot of times I've talked to people. There's brethren that has done the same thing to me. I'm like, no, I'm right. You're wrong. And they did it in meekness. But brother, it says this. Brother, it says that. Brother, you made that comment. Where does it say that in the Bible? And like I told you before, I get in here and I'm like, and I'm sitting here, I'm like, okay, Lord, I was wrong. I must have heard that from somebody else. And I'm being a PWC and I'm probably want a cracker. And I'm just parroting something and it's like, uh, Lord, I gotta go to that brother now and apologize and say that they lined up with the Bible. I didn't. Humble yourself. Okay? Humble yourself. Let's get back to 1 uh, Thessalonians 5, verse 14. Now, we exhort you, brethren. Here's the exhorting. I got an exhort exhortation from a sister in Christ. Praise God. I'm gonna exhort you, brothers, sisters in Christ. Because Paul did exhorted me and now I'm passing it on to you. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Warn them. Brothers Christ, it's not about the disagreement, although sometimes wolves in sheep's clothing come in, how they disagree, they're trying to cause division. But when people start getting unruly, they get into the name calling, the mocking, the bear the backbiting and whispering, the bearing false witness. Okay? Cause, purposely trying to, it's not just the okay we disagree, they're trying to cause a debate, an argument, they're trying to cause, they're trying to scatter the flock. Be very careful of them that are unruly. Okay, warn them, hey, we're not going to debate the Bible, we're not going to argue by it, we're here just to discuss it, we're going to compare scripture with scripture. I had a brother in Christ that I had to tell him, I said, listen, if you could, because he kept coming back with, uh, inserting things into the text that aren't there with feelings and opinions. And I had to tell him, it's not that I don't care about your feelings and opinions, but you're not going to get anywhere with me if you can't prove in the Scriptures, flat out, chapter and verse, comparing Scripture with Scripture, that what I'm saying is wrong. All right? All right. I said, i got to stop this, because right now it's getting into an argument. It's getting into a debate. All right? i got to stop this. All right? I don't want to get unruly because when things start getting unruly, that's when people start picking sides. That's when people start, you know, dividing. That's when you have break, when your fellowship, when you lose fellowship with somebody, it's, it's a hard break. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's drama and you go your separate ways and a, and, and a big explosion. And then you go separate. You don't just, okay, I, I'm going to go my separate way peacefully. It's an explosion. But warn them that are unruly. Also, this could be included with sin. Brethren that are getting back into sin and wickedness, idolatry, worldliness. Okay, warn them. Hey, that stuff's going to mess you up. It's gonna, if you're a man in ministry, it's going to mess up your ministry. I've seen it happen. Uh, it's going to mess up your fellowship with the brethren. You need to get back on track. Right. 
but unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. I don't come across those that, that much, but there's some men and women out there that it's almost like they got the mind of a child. Okay? Uh, we need to comfort them. I've seen some men uh, out there that seem to be feeble-minded and they get taken advantage of by the lost world in wolves and sheep's clothing. We need to comfort them with the truth and keep preaching truth to them and help take care of them. Support the weak. Be patient towards all men. Support the weak. Mainly our elders, brothers and Christ. Are you there to help? If I had a body, a body of Christ here physically in a house church and there were some elders, I'd be going over saying, hey, can I help you do this? Can I help you do that? Do you need help with this? Support the weak. You might have brethren that have disabilities. They might be young, but they have disabilities that kind of hinder them from, from being 100%. Support the weak. Be patient to all men. No, 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 no. I just have to be patient to save sinners. No, it says all men, brother says Christ. Be patient unto all men. It's not easy. There's some men that know how to rile me up, lost people. I always say this sometimes. My ex-wife, she knew how to really get me riled up. She knew what buttons to push. My daughter was the same way. She knew what buttons to push. To get me all riled up, and I, I really had to work hard on being patient. All right? We need to be patient towards all men. I tried preaching truth to both of those people, and, and to a lot of people. Not just my ex-wife or my daughter. I, I preached truth to a lot of people, and like I just gave an example of, maybe they're not ready for it. you got to be patient. Not all of them do. Don't get me wrong, not all of them do. But sometimes they come back and say, okay, I accept the truth. And I'm sorry for how I acted and how I treated you. You were right. I'm sorry. You've got to be patient. Brothers and sisters, be patient. Trust the Lord. Continue to live right and do what's right. And be patient to all men, saved and lost. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. No, no, no. That just means we, that just saves sinners. Okay. I know this man. I'm not going to name his name who's rendering evil for evil, and he justifies it because they're not saved. They're wolves in sheep's clothing, or they're lost, and he justifies doing it to people by saying, one minute you're saved, I love you, brother, I'm here for you, brother, I'm praying for you, brother, and then the next minute you're lost, therefore I don't have, I can render evil for evil, because you're not saved. You're lost, you're a heretic. Uh, no, it says here, see that no man, it says, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, any Man, that includes saved and lost. But ever follow that which is good. Remember what the Bible talks about? It talks about overcoming evil with good. There's other passages where it talks about not rewarding evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Do that which is good. It doesn't matter how the lost world acts or how the lost world treats us. It doesn't matter what direction this wicked world is going in. We are still supposed to stand for that which is good. And do things God's way, the right way. And here's the thing. But ever follow that which is, tr is good, both among yourselves and to all men. One of the things I like to point out is the name calling that seems to go on. With the wolves and sheep's clothing. Yes, there are wolves and sheep's clothing out there. Yes, there's false converts out there. Yes, there's people that are leading people astray. But I know a man that when he, is, when he was attacked, he had his wife attacked, his son attacked, name called, and they, they were very vicious. They bared false witness. They promoted backbiting wisdom. They did a smear campaign on him. And it's wrong for them to do it. They shouldn't be doing this. A, he needs to learn to give God the glory. And I do too uh, in these situations. We all need help with that, brother says Christ. But he's starting to do the same thing to them. They do it to me, I'm going to do it to them. Are we supposed to have that attitude? No. No. Okay? Both among yourselves and to all men. We're not to render evil for evil, but follow that which is good. Good. Brothers and Christ, how are you doing in that area? Someone spits in your face, do you feel like you have the right to spit back in their face? No, you don't. Someone calls you names, so you have the right to call them names? Someone lied about you, so you have the right to lie about them? 
Someone hurts you, so you're going to turn around and hurt them? Some, I've heard some people say about the Old Testament, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's the Old Testament. That's not for today. Right? The lost world is going to be like that. And we see them tearing each other up left and right. We're not to reward you. Now, don't get me wrong. Before anybody starts to disagree, don't get me wrong. If you live after the flesh, ye shall die. There are still consequences in this life for sin. Even as a saved sinner, God can forgive your sins eternally, but there are still consequences to sin down here, and sometimes you're going to have to answer to those consequences. Absolutely. But we're supposed to follow that which is good. We're not supposed to fall into the trap of, okay, he did it to me, so I'm going to do it back. Be careful. One of the biggest things that I struggle with is debating. People can get, sometimes can draw me into a debate they start debating, so then I start debating. They start arguing, so I start arguing. No, 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 no. When I realize it's debating, it's arguing, sometimes we get into a, what's those, I call it a loop argument. We seem to be going in circles. We're going in circles. We're not getting anywhere. In other words, that's the whole point of going in circles. You're not getting anywhere. You're not going anywhere. I'm not being able to convince him. He's not being able to convince me. Uh, we need to stop before this gets heated, before we say things we don't, we shouldn't say, before we lose our fellowship with one another, friendship. Okay. Uh, Brother says, Christ, don't reward evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Right. Pray for one another. When you see a brother that you think is doing wrong, try to preach the truth to him. He doesn't want to hear it, pray for him. That's the solution. Not yelling at him. Not talking about him behind their back. Praying for him. Pardon me. And one of the things that bother me with the body of Christ lately is if you believe that a brother in Christ is wrong about something in the scriptures or that he's getting into sin and worldliness and you need to correct him according to the scriptures, make sure you're using scripture, you need to go to him and talk to him. That's love for your brother and sister in Christ. Ignoring it and setting back and saying, I'm just going to ignore it or just say, oh, I'm going to kick him to the curb like he's nothing without talking to him, that ain't love. That's not doing good. Following that which is good. You see a brother in Christ that's heading for destruction, you need to talk to him. You need to warn him. Right. Verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Brother says Christ, we need to learn that one. We need to start rejoicing more. People say, well, I rejoice all the time. Yeah, but do you, when you rejoice, is it because there's good things happening? Do you still rejoice when bad things are happening to you? When it seems like everyone's turning on you, when it seems like you're so alone, I struggle with loneliness. If you seem like you're so alone, I've had a lot of brethren that I love and care about and still pray for this day turn on me. I've had family members turn on me. They don't talk to me. Do you still re rejoice evermore? Do you still give God glory? Do you still praise God? Through the tough times as well as the good times. When bad things happen as well as when good things happen. Are you rejoicing evermore? You know what helps get me through? Looking for that blessed hope. Reading the word of God. I, I, every time I feel like I'm just so alone trying to do the work of the Lord. Uh, I know there's other brethren out there in ministry. I know there's other brothers since Christ. But there are days that I do feel alone. I start reading about Jeremiah and what he went through. There's a man that was, was told to preach the word of God and nobody would listen to him. And I read that, I was like, okay, I'm not there. I'm not, I didn't have it as bad as Jeremiah has it. There's still some brothers and sisters in Christ that are encouraging me from time to time. I'm not there. I don't know why it's something like this fog of, of you know, negativity trying to get me to think the worst of the worst. And it's like, oh, no, I'm not there. So I read about Jer Jeremiah. Right? And I start rejoicing, Lord. Brothers and Christ, we need to rejoice. Say, Lord, help me to rejoice. Help me to trust you no matter what's going on in my life. Help me to trust you. And if bad things are going on in my life because I screwed up, help me to repent and learn from that mistake and get back to rejoicing evermore. Trusting you and praising you and rejoicing evermore. And we're getting ahead of myself, but thanking you in all things, giving you glory in all things. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Exhortation, brother in Christ, are you praying without ceasing? I had someone mock me because I always talk about how I sit outside. I go for walks on the beach. I go for a walk around the mountainside. 
and I pray. I sit on the, the, out on the deck here and look at the hillside and I pray. I'm sitting here doing work where I'm working in the garden. I pray and I'm using that as a motive. I'm not patting myself on the back like I'm something great. I'm trying to exhort you brothers and encourage you brothers as Christ to pray all the time. There's times where I go, like I get started in the day trying to get stuff done. And by the time it's three o'clock in the afternoon, I, I stop and I'm like, something's not right. I feel wrong. Something's not right. And you know what hits me right across the head? Have you prayed today? You, you didn't start the day with the Word of God. You jumped up too quick and just got started with your day. You didn't start your day with the Word of God. You haven't even said one word to God today yet. You didn't pray at all today. And it hits me now that I've, I've gotten into the habit of doing it every day. When I skip a day of doing it, it affects me. It does, brother, says Christ. I was like, oh Lord, so I stopped what I was doing and I started praying. Lord, this is what I've done so far. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Thank you for this, Lord. Thank you for what you've done for today. The food, the clothes. Lord, thank you for the studies we, that, that, that you'll let me watch. Uh, thank you for this, Lord. I need help with this. You get to praying. Pray without ceasing. Okay? You need to have a strong prayer life, especially in these last days. You need to have a strong prayer life. You need to have a strong Bible reading and Bible studying life so you're not a simpleton. Remember what the Bible says? With good words and fair speeches, it's even the hearts of the simple. And for God to open the scriptures, the Bible says that um, if anybody lack wisdom, let them ask of God that give it to all men liberally. You ask God for wisdom, and he gives it to you. You ask God in prayer to open the scriptures to you. You ask God in prayer to protect you right? from false teachings, from lies, from this wicked world. You pray, brothers and Christ. Pray without ceasing. You need to have a strong, not, not a strong watching video life. You need to have a strong reading the Bible for yourself and studying the Bible for yourself life. You need to have a strong prayer life. And you need to actually take, have a strong life where you're taking the words of God, hiding them in your heart, and you're living them. Living a life of Christ life. Pray without ceasing. Verse 18, And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And everything give thanks. When bad things happen, give thanks. God let it happen for a reason. Now, I've always said this before, and I'll say it again. I have bad things happen to me because I made stupid decisions. We're still to give God thanks because God allowed it to happen for me to learn from it, for me to repent. When I fall, God gets me back up. And it helps me to rely on God more and to trust God more and try not to make the same mistake again. Although there's been times where I've made the same mistake over and over and over. And some of us are slow learners. Okay. Oh yeah. But we're still supposed to thank God. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. I got a flat tire. I'm going to be late. Well, praise God. Thank you, Lord. And then you start praying, Lord, help me get this tire changed. Can, can you, someone drives, I don't have a cell phone. Someone drives by that has a cell phone. I, I need a AAA called. I need a tow. Whatever. You, tr you pray, trust God and you thank God for everything. And you ask God for help when you need help. Pray without ceasing. Verse 19, quench not the spirit. We've talked about this. People will try to confuse this and mess this up. How does one quench the spirit? It says, uh, quench not the spirit, else in the Bible says, quench not the spirit, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. If you start even thinking that you can lose your salvation, or that you have to earn salvation, and you're, uh, this is for someone who's truly saved, not for false converts, but for someone who's truly saved, if you, get, if you start listening to the wrong people, and they start trying to talk you into believing that you have to earn your salvation, you can't know that you're saved, the Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Right? You are sealed into the day of redemption. That's the rest of this verse. It says, Quench not the Spirit, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. That's how you quench the Spirit, when you start thinking that you've lost your salvation, or that you have to earn it. Sometimes God will get you to doubt your salvation, because you're not amounting much to the Lord. I thought you gave your life to me at the cross. This is, I'm talking about God. He's like, I thought you gave your life to me at the cross. You're not amounting much for, for me. 
You're still choosing your flesh, the world, and you're listening to Satan more than you're listening to me. Remember the three enemies. Your flesh, me, myself, and I. That's the number one enemy. Number two enemy is the world. The Bible talks about pleasing the world. How many times we go through the Bible, Saul had a problem with pleasing the world. Pontius Pilate had a problem with pleasing the world. We go through the Bible, we find men that had a problem with, they had to please men over pleasing God. The Pharisees pleased men over God, wanted, to pl wanted men to praise them over God. Right. Sometimes God will get you to doubt your salvation. That's not quenching the Spirit. Quenching the Spirit is when someone comes along and says, you have to earn salvation, you start to believe it when you're saved. You start thinking, well, I'm not sealed into the day of redemption. I have to earn salvation or I can lose my salvation. That's when you quench the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when I was newly saved because of my having a heart, holding on to sin and wickedness and worldliness and having a hard time letting it go, there were times that I doubted my salvation. Am I really saved? God got me to doubt my salvation to say, hey, you need to stop holding on to this junk and you need to let it go. You need to start doing things that I tell you to do and stop doing things that I tell you to stop doing. But you've got to get to a point, Brother says Christ, and it doesn't take millions of years to do it. You've got to get to a point where you're like, I'm saved. I don't have to earn it. No one's going to talk me out of that. And I don't have to, and I can't lose it. It's not mine to lose. My salvation belongs to the Lord. And you get to looking for that blessed hope every day. Every day. Okay. 12, uh, 20. Despise not prophesying. There's some brethren that despise looking for that blessed hope. The imminent return of Jesus Christ. You have some brethren that they might be saved. I, doubt, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's between them and the Lord at this point. That they're post and mid-trip. They have the same gospels I preach. They believe the King James Bible is perfect, but they're so messed up. They don't. They, the number one reason, the one, number one thing that I find, the reason they're so messed up is they're not dispensational. They're just not dispensational. Okay? They take all the Bible and try to apply the whole Bible today, or they pick what they want out of the whole Bible. That's a better way of saying it. They pick what they want out of the whole Bible and try to apply it to today. When well, it doesn't apply to today. They're not rightly dividing the word of truth. We can learn from it, but it doesn't apply today. Okay. Despise not prophesying. And also, I believe when Paul wrote this, Revelation hadn't been written. Okay, John was prophesying of the catching away of the body of Christ. What happened to the people that go into that time of Jacob's trouble? He was talking about the day of the Lord. Can we, can we talk about these things? Absolutely, don't get distracted. But we can talk about these things. Now, the day of the Lord, don't get distracted, but remember, the Bible talks about today that if we suffer with Him, we shall also reign with Him. So we do need to focus on the, the kingdom of heaven, sometimes called the kingdom of God, that the day of the Lord. We need to focus it on today as far as we need to make sure we're, we're living for Jesus Christ. And if you're living for Jesus Christ, standing for, this, standing for His word and living His word, you're going to suffer. You're going to take suffering from the world. You're going to suffer from brethren that are falling away and how they treat you. Family members, friends, co-workers. You're going to suffer. We're not to despise prophesying. There's a lot of prophecies in this book that have been fulfilled. There's prophecies in this book that haven't been fulfilled. But every once in a while you come across those people that you, they, just, they despise prophesying. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Okay. 21. Here's a big one right here. Prove all things. Brother Jesus Christ, prove all things? Oh, I don't have to prove anything to no one. We did our study about why they were called Christians. We're doing our series of studies of, uh, are you looking? Prove your own selves. Examine whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. All throughout the Bible, it talks about proving yourself. Proving yourself. Oh, I don't have to prove anything. Yes, you do. What does this say right here? Prove all things. You're a Bible believer? Oh, yeah, I'm a Bible believer. I believe the King James Bible is God's perfect written word. Are you memorizing scripture and hiding it in your heart and living it? Remember, it's not, it's not good enough just to memorize. You also, because I know people that have great memories that they can memorize really easy, but they're not hiding in their heart and they're not living it. So memorizing alone isn't enough, but we desperately need to memorize Scripture, brother, says Christ, because when you're out there in the world and you're being tempted, what do we always say you do? Start singing a hymn. 
Get into the Word of God. If you don't have the Word of God readily right in your hands when you're being tempted, that's where the memorizing Scripture comes in. Okay? Um, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy Word. Okay? Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay? Jesus said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. If you love me, keep my commandments. There's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. And we can keep going. You need to memorize scripture. This, when people start getting you to doubt that if this is the perfect written word of God, you need to start going through all those scriptures. Uh, one of the things we're going to get to here, the next verse is abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil, put no wicked thing before thine eyes. Okay. The Bible talks about it. Are we to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How are we that are dead to sin and live any longer therein? We need, you need to memorize some scripture and get them in your heart and make sure you're living them, but you need to have them up here because... This might not always be available. One of the biggest prayers I pray all the time, Brother Jesus Christ, is that no matter how bad it gets out there, that I said, Lord, please let me keep the Bible. No matter how bad it gets out here, let me be able, always be able to speak your word, read your word, and hear your word. I know some brethren don't get that. There's some brethren that might be deaf. There's some brethren that are blind or going blind. <laughs> I just get thicker and thicker and thicker. But that's a prayer that I pray. I always want to be able to have God's Word in my hand. But there's times where God's like, you need to get it up here, and you need to get it here. You might not always have the paper, Word of God, you need to have it here. Okay? Prove all things. You're a Bible believer? Prove it. Today, people claim to be Christians. Prove it. You have, like we just talked about, you have brethren, a faint, a, a, a love unfeigned. You have brethren behind the camera smiling. They're running a business. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. I love you guys. I really do. And behind the TV and everything, like the TV evangelists. Prove it! According to the scriptures, prove it. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. There it says it again. Hold fast to that which is good. Hold fast. Don't let anybody take it. Stand for what is right and good and true. Don't let it go. Looking for that blessed hope. That's one of the biggest things in the body of Christ. About, it was like two years ago. That a great man of God that was very hardcore about you know standing for the word of God. He had such a love for the word of God. had a love for the brethren. And he would stand for the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Looking for that blessed hope as it applies to the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. Catching away the body of Christ. He taught that. If you turn, the, the, this is the number one thing that the post and mid-trib attack. They attack an imminent return. And when you give up on the imminent return, you give, it's the first step to post and mid-trib. You might not be there yet, but it's the first step heading that direction. And what happened? He gave up on the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Over the years, he didn't hold fast to that which is good. He got distracted by the world. Hold fast to that which is good, brother and sister Christ. The doctrines that this Bible has. The Bible says all scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, the changed life after salvation. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How do you hold fast to that which is good? You stay in the word of God every day. You stay in prayer. Sanctification. Sanctify the thy truth, thy word is truth. Sanctification. Okay. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There's got you, brothers and sisters, you got to get the God's Word in your heart. you got to have Jesus Christ in your heart, the Holy Spirit, open the Scriptures and hide God's Word in your heart and live it. Okay. Staying from all appearance of evil. That's a big one. I've gotten on to brethren that 
They think they're doing a good work where they're trying to warn people about evil and wickedness out there. But in the process of warning brethren about evil and wickedness, they're putting wickedness right in front of your face. That's wrong. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I have some brethren that have really got messed up with the world because they went too far in their research. All I'm doing is just research. They try to use that as justification. Oh, it's just research. It's just research. You don't have to get all this wickedness and sin in front of you to say that this is wickedness and sin. Be careful, brothers, says Christ. We're to abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. Today I've told you, the only place you can have right now, brothers, says Christ, that's that abstain from all appearance of evil free zone as it is, is your home. Make sure your home is abstained from all appearance of evil. That your home is a Bible-believing, God-fearing home. I had a brother once mention that, oh, I have a, on one of his teachings, I have a uh, Spider-Man uh, poster. You shouldn't have that. You need to abstain from all appearance of evil. Well, I, I got this and I got that. and It's like, you need to make sure your home is an abstain from all appearance of evil home. Get all the wickedness out. Let all the good in. Cling to that which is good. Uh, but, every, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Hold fast to that which is good. Make sure that house has all the good things in it. Things that glorify God. Things that you can praise God for. I got in it with some of the brethren years and years ago because they, 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 were, they were so far gone. I hope they're saved. I, I, don't, I, I treated them like they were lost. I really did. I treated them like they were lost. I even, probably, I even said one of them was lost. Because they've gone so far to say that they could do Bible studies while playing filthy, wicked video games. Not innocent ones. Wicked, proven to be filthy and wicked and they were causing division in the body of Christ because they wouldn't let go of the filthy, wicked video games and Hollywood movies and TV shows and anime, which is just child porn, okay? And say tank style music. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. But this is Christ. When you're newly saved, you really need, we really need to encourage them in meekness. Don't be a jerk about it. You really need to get these things out of your life. Like I said, I fought the Lord for a couple years. It took a, a good year to a year and a half to two years, between one and two years, to really get a lot of that wickedness out of my life because I fought Him. You might come across a brother in Christ that's not a false convert. He's just fighting the Lord and letting go of sin. He keeps giving into the flesh and... He gets rid of it, he gets back into it. He gets rid of it, he gets back into it. That shouldn't be your whole life as a Christian. There are some that probably do, but it shouldn't be. Okay. We're there to encourage them to get rid of this wickedness and this sin. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Right now, I go to the beaches to walk on the beach. I have all these back beaches that I go to. And uh, I say back beach is like you're going to uh, like the back, what's called, the, look, we call the backyard. The front yard everyone can see, but you go to your backyard, it's supposed to be private. You go to these beaches that hardly anybody goes to. Not because I don't want to witness. I still witness. I carry gospel tracts on me. I've tried handing gospel tracts. Most of the time they say no. Sometimes they'll take it. I don't know if they'll read it. It's on them. And I witness to them. But for the most part, it's the wickedness. There are certain beaches around here that you I pull up to and I turn around and drive away. There's too much wickedness on that beach. Abstain from all appearance of evil. There were stories that I learned from a brother in Christ, uh, testimonies, about people that they're, they're trying to use the excuse that I'm, I'm, I'm evangelizing, I'm preaching the gospel. They went into wicked places to preach the gospel and had all this wickedness in front of them. You don't do that. You don't go into wicked places to preach the gospel. Right? But it's getting hard today, Brother Sister Christ, to even go sh get groceries. i got to get in, get out, start singing a hymn when I go in there, start uh, talking to the Lord about His Word, get what I need, and get out. Why? Because there's so much wickedness in the shops today. 
the move, the all the movies. That's what I gave up for the Lord. The wicked movies, the the magazines, okay, and modesty dress women and men, okay. The satanic style music sometimes that'll be playing. Um, people swearing. You walk by and hear someone cussing and everything. It's like it's just wickedness. Yes, they need to get saved. Yes, we need to witness to them. But we need to be careful and make sure that we're not going out of our way. We're going out of our way to put evil in front of us. We're abstaining from all appearance of evil. All. There's no justification. Well, I'm witnessing for Jesus Christ. There's no justification. Well, I'm doing research. There's no justification. Well, I'm trying to warn the brethren. There's no justification. You can warn the brethren without showing them the evil. Okay. Now, before anybody gets, gets too bent out of shape, that brother, there was a brother in Christ that I warned about that. I wasn't the only one. He repented, and he, he's going to work hard in the future not to throw a lot of wickedness in front of people. He's, he's, we make mistakes. We make mistakes. We repent. We forsake. We try to do things differently. We try to do things better. That's a good thing. Okay? But brothers and sisters in Christ, today, I think the biggest compromise among a lot of big compromises is, one, we're not loving one another. We have feigned love. We just throw that word around like, you know, like it's toilet paper. Remember how they used to throw toilet paper? They buy a lot of toilet paper and throw it over the houses and over trees and stuff like that. Uh, we just throw it around like it's nothing. It's supposed to mean something. So that's one of the things that's hurting the body of Christ is love for your brothers and sisters of Christ. I didn't say we have, that you have to agree with them when they're wrong. That you have to fellowship with them when they're holding sin and idolatry and wickedness in their heart. But you're still to love them. The other thing is, is here, abstain from all appearance of evil. Most of the professing Christian world out there, they, they love evil. They have no problem with you. They don't get a... F when you walk around and you see a guy dressed up like a, uh, in a dress, like a woman, you should be going, ugh. When I was first saved, I wasn't going, ugh. Why? Because I had seen it my whole life through Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games, commercials. I was lost. It was no big. It, it, yeah, I was told it's wrong. Yeah, it's it's wrong. He probably shouldn't do that. But it didn't really bug me. Now that I'm saved and born again, and I know God's word, that's an abomination in God's sight. It bugs me. It bugs me when I see women wearing pants, women with short hair, women, men with long hair. Okay. And that's just the simple things. That's the first things you see. The the swearing bugs me. Okay, the, the dirty jokes I used to laugh at bug me. Okay? You need to abstain from all appearance of evil. I told this story before, Brother Jesus Christ, where I went, I was going to give a, a guy a gospel track. He, I guess he was a talkative guy. He wanted to talk. He told me a dirty joke. And he's laughing afterwards. He, 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 he. And I just looked at him and I wasn't mean or nothing. I just said, oh, by the way, can I give you this gospel tract? And when I went to hand him that gospel tract, oh, 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 he straightened up, he stopped cussing, he didn't tell me any more dirty jokes. Yeah. You don't encourage evil and wickedness by supporting it, and you don't, you do your best not to have it around you. If that guy kept wanting to tell me dirty jokes, I'd have told him, I'm sorry, I don't want to hear that stuff, and I would have walked away. That needs to be our attitude. I don't want evil and wickedness in front of me. It's really hurting the body of Christ, so I'm trying to encourage you. If you still have evil and wickedness in your home, get it out. False idols. Okay. Get it out. Okay, if you still have a lot of Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games, satanic style music, get it out. And like I said, use the, stay in the Word of God, stay in prayer, right, uh, use spiritual discernment, and just walk through your house. I still walk through my house from time to time. I'm sorry to be stuck on this, this one verse here, abstain from all appearance of evil. But I have a cabinet here where I've got stuff that I collected all over the world. It's sitting right here. I've got a, a cabinet in the other room. And um, I walk around through the house, and, and this was years and years down the road. I walk around the house, I see something, and God's like, I've overlooked that for a while, but you know what? You need to look at it. It's time for you to look at that. And I went and looked at some of my things, and I had false gods in my I mean, all, actual false gods. In my house. I had wickedness and sin in my house. Just because you think you've got it all down and it's perfect, brother says Christ, 
You need to make it a monthly thing to where you walk, just slowly walk around the house as you pray and talk with the Lord and look around and say, Lord, is there anything in here that's offensive to you? Is there anything in here that is, goes against your word? And slowly walk the house because you might have gotten everything out and something got brought back in and you didn't notice. Well, that's happened to me too. Sometimes you've let some, your flesh has talked you into letting something back in. It's still your fault. And you do that once a month, and it's like, oh, my flesh, I, I failed you, Lord. I let this back in. Okay, you get it right back out. I'd rather see a brother and sister in Christ that gets things out and might let them back in every month and gets it out and then lets it in and gets it out every month than a brother and sister in Christ that sits there and just ignores it and lets it stay, period. It's the struggle that matters. It's the fight that matters. I listened to a brother in Christ. He talked about how when brothers and sisters of Christ sin, it is, sin is still a big issue. It is a big issue even for a safe sinner. But the part that bugs him is not that brothers and sisters in Christ sin. What bug, what's, worries him is that they don't repent. The important part isn't that you're completely sinless as a safe sinner. The important part is that when you do sin, you repent. And get your heart right with God. Verse 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Sanctify him through thy truth, thy word is truth. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, and old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I've already quoted that verse, How we to sin that grace may abound, God forbid, how we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Sanctify you wholly. Our, well, when you get saved, brother, sister, in Christ, our past life gets washed away. The internal punishment for sin gets washed away. We get to go to heaven. But the Bible clearly tells us that if you live after the flesh, you shall die. And that we're not to live after the flesh. We're supposed to stay in God's Word and let God clean our life up. Let God sanctify us and cleanse us and clean us up while we're down here. And the very God of peace and of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. There's your definition of a person right there. Spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you looking for that blessed hope, Brother Jesus Christ, with the life that you're living? Once again, this shows it in comparison to God sanctify you wholly, sanctification, the way you're living your life determines if you're looking for that blessed hope. You know, there's some brethren that have taken their eyes off the blessed hope. Oh, he's not coming anytime soon. He won't be here for a while. And their life shows it. They're letting a lot of idolatry in. They're letting a lot of wickedness in. Worldliness in. They've been caught adding to and subtracting from the scriptures. They're making a mess of the Word of God. They're making a mess of their walk with the Lord. Why? Because their whole spirit and soul and body is not preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because they've taken their eyes off Jesus Christ. Their priorities change. Pleasing people down here, like being man-pleasers, are more important than pleasing God. Being self-pleasers, i got to please three people. The, most, the number one three people I've got to please is me, myself, and I. You come across those people. They're not pleasing the Lord. The Lord doesn't come first. His Word doesn't come first. They're not, they don't have their eyes on Jesus Christ. That's the number one way Satan's going to get the brethren messed up today. I talk about all these things that really are hurting the brethren, but you know how all these things come in, where you start failing to do these things that the Bible's telling me to exhort you with? How you fail to do these things? By taking your eyes off Jesus Christ and His perfect written word. Get distracted with this world. You got people that are looking for, um, they're looking for the mark of the beast. They're looking for the one world order. They're looking for the man of sin, the son of perdition. They're looking for the economic collapse. The worldwide economic collapse, not just countries collapsing. They, country, countries fall and rise. That's, the Bible said it's going to happen. But the worldwide economic collapse. Why? Because you're looking for the mark of the beast. Are we supposed to be looking for any of those things? No. We're not going to be here for it. Why are we looking for it? We're supposed to be looking for Jesus Christ. 
I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what motivates you to abide by all this exhortation that Paul's given us? You know what motivates you? You're looking for Jesus Christ to come back. If he came back tomorrow, where am I failing the Lord here that we just talked about? What do I need to do? What am I not doing that I'm supposed to be doing? It's a motivation to live for Jesus Christ every day. How does Satan take away that motivation? He gets you to stop looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Be careful. Be careful. 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. God calls you. When you get saved... God will make it possible for you to abide by all these things that we talked about. Stay from appearance of evil. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. And don't render evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Right? But ever follow that which is good. He'll make these things possible. Brothers and Christ, trust the Lord. What's going on in the world? The Lord has the time of Jacob's trouble taken care of. I believe the Lord is preparing the world today for the time of Jacob's trouble. I, I believe that. But the Lord's got that covered. He'll deal with that. We're supposed to live for Jesus Christ every day and be a light to this dark world. We're supposed to be following the Word of God. Okay, for what's today. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Another thing for this is he said he'd come back to get us someday, and he will. He'll call us home in death, or he'll call us home in life, the catching away of the body of Christ. But one way or another, God's going to come get us. He's not going to just leave us here. We need to continue living for him and looking for him every day. 25, brethren, pray for us. With the pray without ceasing, make sure that you're mentioning brethren in your prayer. You're mentioning men in ministry in your prayer. I pray for a lot of men in ministry, even ones that have, have uh, turned their back on me. I believe they've turned their back on the Word, not me. It's not me that they hate. It's the Word they hate. I pray for brethren. That I, that people say, you seem to have a fight with them or beef with them. I pray for them still. I still do, every day. I pray for the lost world. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ that turn their back on me. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ that still support this ministry, me in ministry. Like I said, I'm not a bishop, I'm not a deacon, I'm not an ordained elder. I'm just a man of God that loves the Lord, loves His Word, and is trying to do something for the Lord, and trying to be a good servant to the body, brothers and sisters of Christ. And is, have I struggled along the way? Have I made some mistakes along the way? I've made some big mistakes along the way. Okay, brothers and sisters of Christ, pray for me. Pray for one another. Okay? Mainly, I guess, number one prayer is that we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and that we don't become part of the falling away. Brethren are dropping like flies. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle, this epistle, be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. You know, one of the biggest things that's missing, the, we're at the end, one of the biggest things that I believe is missing in these Babel buildings some men get up there and they love to hear themselves talk. They do. And their whole, they go, they, they talk for an hour or longer. And if you look at the hour, how much time they actually spend reading the Word of God, it's a fraction of that teaching. They spend probably a minute or two worth reading the Scriptures and they're going off on, tan, on stories and testimonies. And some preaching's okay like that. But what's really missing among the body of Christ is Bible reading. When you come together, we're supposed to be reading the Bible, just listening to the Bible. I have Alexander Scorvey where I sit there and listen to the Bible. If I had a house church, there'd be some times where I'd sit there and have people read a psalm or a proverb and read the whole thing out. We need to be, but mainly the Pauline epistles, we need to be reading it aloud together. What does it just say there? I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. Not just preached, read. Where you sit here and you just read it. I know I'm talking and preaching a little bit, but just reading it. That's why sometimes by this is Christ, we do our, our, our Bible readings. We used to do Bible reading by the pond, uh, Bible reading by the fire. If I could, 
Um, I'm running out of wood. <laughs> Next year I'll have to make sure I have a little bit more wood than I did this year because this is my first year with the wood stove and kind of ran out of some, I'm getting very low on wood so I'm trying to only burn a couple logs every day. If I can get the house warm enough, it'll stay warm enough. I've got my uh, legging inserts underneath my jeans and underneath this. I can put on more clothes to stay a little bit warmer. Um, but we need to do some Bible reading where you just sit there and read the Bible to the brethren. That's something that's, that, that's something that's very desperately missing from the body of Christ today. That's why I was putting out on YouTube there for a while, I need to get back to it, uh, Bible by the Ocean Side, where you're sitting there and just list, you're sharing the Bible, just exactly what it says, with the brethren. Okay. We need to get back into the Pauline epistles. We really do. I know some brethren that are straying. You, this whole book is good for you. This whole book is good for you, brothers of Christ. Instruction in righteousness. But doctrine for today is primarily found in the, uh, in the Pauline epistles. Primarily. Not only, but primarily. And Paul put a lot into the Pauline epistles to help us today from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ, to live the life of Christ, to do the work of Jesus Christ, to do the work of an evangelist, to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ, to be a light to this dark world. Okay? One thing you really need to get down is the Pauline epistles. Everything's important. Old Testament, I read the Old Testament, clear the New Testament. Every year I make sure to go through the Old Testament to the New Testament, at least twice. Listening to Alexander Scorvey uh, and my Bible studies, I'm going through the Pauline, you've probably followed me along in Bible studies, why do you go through the Pauline epistles a lot and use those verses the most? There's some Psalms you can use, there's some Proverbs, I'm getting into Psalms and Proverbs, but the reason I use, and I do use them sometimes, is I want to get you guys focused that this is what Paul says. He says, I charge you by the floor that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The Pauline epistles are what we really need to cling to. Okay? Um, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You got the Gospels. There's times God, that Jesus would talk about the time of the Gentiles. We get the term the time of the Gentiles from Jesus Christ. In the Gospels, there's some things in the Gospel. Like I said, there's some things that overlap. All the but it's just we need to make sure we get back to Bible reading. Even if it's just Psalms, Proverbs, reading the Old Testament, reading the New Testament, we need to get back to Bible reading. Okay, among the brethren. Okay, but remember, there was a time where people didn't have this. People didn't have God's Word in one complete volume like we do today. Everyone has their own Word of God. So this is why I tell you, make sure you're reading it. But when Paul wrote this, not everybody had that. You had that letter, make sure you're reading the letter. Not everybody had it. There's only one letter. Make sure you're co they copied, faithful copies. But you only have one, you read it to everybody. There was a time when Bibles were coming out, where God's Word was all in one volume. People didn't, ha not everyone had a Bible. One family had one Bible. You know what they did around the, the fire at night? They would pass it around, teach, they would teach their kids to read through the Bible. But they'd pass around and people would take turns reading the Bible. Because they only had one. We need to get back to that, brothers of Christ. You need to get back to the habit of reading the Bible. Read, read, read. Focus on this. Not man talking. You know, not the world. Right? So, brothers of Christ, I hope this has been an exhortation. I'm sorry it took this long. Uh, thank you, sister in Christ, for the exhortation. Brothers of Christ, we're in the last days. I see how bad it's getting out there, and I say, Lord, is, it could happen any day. Are we going to come home today? Is today the day, Lord? What do I need to get done for you today? What, what do you have planned for me today, Lord? What, what are we going to get done today? I need to plant some gar. I need to start planting the garden, but the weather's been still really cold, and like I said, we had ice and rain. I'm like, Lord, what do we have? What do you have for me today? Okay, he can come back any day now. What do you need me to do? Is there some sanctification I need to do? Oh, Lord, I started thinking of things I shouldn't have thought of. Get them out of my head, Lord. Stay focused. Be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Remember what the Bible says, not to be entangled with the affairs of this life who have chosen him to be a soldier. You need to focus on your walk with the Lord, not how bad the world's getting. You can look and see it and go, Oh, Lord, are we coming home anytime soon? But don't let it affect your walk with the Lord. Brothers of Christ, stand, stand, stand. Don't faint. Don't falter. Okay. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Thank you for watching, and I'm praying for you, Brother Sister Christ. Keep praying for me, and we'll just get by day by day, day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here.